Okay, um, well, this uh, card that I posted has um, generated a lot more feedback than I've gotten in a long time, and probably the biggest question I got from this was how the coloring was done on the flowers. They appear to pop out. So coloring is something that even in kindergarten I kind of excelled at. So I'll give you a little bit of a close-up of the detail on them, and that was done with the watercolor crayons. However, you can do that with the markers as well. And I'm going to show you both ways to do that technique, or how to achieve, I should say, that effect. So, pan out again. And I'll try to do this as closely as I can. As you can see, I have pre-stamped that image. And, let's see if I could do this. I have my three crayons. They are the Not Quite Navy, the Old Olive, and the, um, from the Neutrals Collection, Soft Suede. So I'm going to start with my... Baja Blue, I'm sorry, Baja Blue, just said, <laughs> not quite navy. Um, and I'm going to make little touches of color on the flower, just like that. Let's see if I come in closer. Come in closer for you here. I'm not coloring the whole thing in, I'm just, like I said, I'm putting touches of color. They're pretty much in the creases. The flowers themselves have some uh, cross hatching on them, and that will help you kind of decide where the the shadows should go. The way that I'm handling highlights is the highlights will be uh, places of no color whatsoever. Um, and that's probably the hardest thing. Uh, people who are learning how to color or they're not sure how to color or you haven't colored since kindergarten. Um, the absence of color, the light um, and white spaces are just as important as the colored areas. And you don't have to have it completely covered in, colored in. For one, the artwork is done for you and you don't want to cover up the artwork. For two, um, you, uh, it def you can get, the lights and darks will allow your eye to um, basically sense depth in the coloring. So, as you can see, just little bits of color leaving white space. And I'm going to make my way around. Moving this to where you can see it. It's very hard for me to color and speak at the same time. It's a skill that walking and chewing gum, I think, fall into as well. I have difficulty with. Okay, the last thing I'm going to add is the suede. And that's the... This is really what's going to work to add depth. I'm not going to outline the entire thing. I just want to put enough on there to make a point. Going around the inside. Okay, I did the inside and now I'm going to go on around the outside. And again, I'm not actually going to put this color everywhere because a little bit goes a long way. Now normally I use the aqua painter with the <clears throat> watercolor crayons. However, for this it's such a small area and I want a very controlled um, I want very controlled use of color. So I am using the blender pen and I'm just going to tap at the color that I have put there and I'm going to take the color off as well. So, again, just taking it off. I'm going to do that all the way around. Because before you know it, <clears throat> you will have the whole thing colored in if you add too much water to it. So you could see, with that rose, there still is um, the areas of absolutely no color. Um, so, Bring this back here. So I don't know if this helps. I'm not a good judge of whether or not this can be seen very well. Oops, I hit a leaf. <laughs> so cleaning off my marker. I'm going to work on the green a little bit. The green actually doesn't need very much uh, moving around. It's probably fine the way it is. So I'll work on the other side 
Just picking up a little bit of the blue. Make sure you can still see it here. This reminds me of when I was little, the coloring books that already had the color on them and all you needed was a paintbrush um, and some water. That's kind of the idea of what you're doing here. It's a very controlled manner of, of coloring. And remember the, the importance of leaving white space. So, it, you know, if that's a new concept to you, it might be very difficult. So I'm going to grab this suede and bring it around. Just a little bit of color goes a long way. You don't need to overdo it. The color is here. And then there's none there, but I'm able to just pull that color along. In the middle here, I am trying to keep that very middle white because if you color this whole thing in, you're not going to get the, the light and dark in there. So you, remember, I kept the color all around and then there's a spot in the middle that has no color to it. But inside every little, I don't know what you call it, like nook and cranny in here, just look, anything that is um, <clears throat> between the flowers where you should see background, anything in there should really be cl colored in. So if you find that you, you know, missed a spot or anything, you can actually pull the color right off the marker, or right off the, um, I'm sorry, right off the crayon itself to make sure that you've got um, the dark spots in there. So moving up to over here. Pulling it sideways. Remember, keeping the middle as white as possible, at least some area of white. And around the edges here, I'm working in a circular motion. Okay, it looks like I'm going to take a little bit of the green and fill in some green here where I've missed. But again, you don't want to touch the green too much. So I don't know if you can see. We've got... We've got that done. Now the second way that you can do this is with the markers. And I'll do one with the markers. Let's see. This one's already pre-cut. And I'll show you the cutting in a moment. I am using more markers to get the lights and darks. And the markers that I'm going to use are the Baja Breeze. Okay, and I'm using the brush tip marker. The, uh, <clears throat> I think in this case it's Lucky Limeade and the Not Quite Navy. So I'm going to start with the little flowers. Let me see if I can get in closer for you here. Okay, and I'm going to work light to dark just little again touches of color now I'm not going to be able to uh, spread this color around this uh, markers are a little bit unforgiving in that way so exactly where I have color is where there will be color so again if you put too much color in the crayon you can always actually remove it with the watercolor um, I'm sorry with the blender pen so you don't have that um, you don't have that ability with the markers but working carefully, you can certainly achieve a very similar effect. And this might seem like it goes slow, but again, I have trouble with the whole walking and chewing gum. But uh, the more you do a particular set, you know, the more you do this, the faster it goes, because you get more familiar with it. Now I'm going to go back, and here's a tough part. I'm going back with my Not Quite Navy. This is a very, very dark color. This is something you really want to work with just the tip. You want to just get little touches of color in there in the cross hatching and this will really add the dark to the lights and dark
Now with the, let's say, with the um, blender pen, I am going to see if I can pull any of that color. Now remember, I'm not working with watercolor paper, so you don't want to do is you don't want to hit it with this too hard or you will um, ruin the paper. So you don't want to do that. So this, because I, I did marker over marker, I've saturated the paper. Normally the marker would not blend like this, but I've done the uh, marker over marker and I've saturated and now I'm able to, it's actually stayed wet enough for me to be able to do a little bit of blending. And again, this this is where there's a slippery slope. You can very, very easily um, over blend and then you lose your white space. So let's work on the Lucky Limeade. We're going to add the green in here. Um, Lucky Limeade is a, an in color. I absolutely love this green. It's not in a crayon, but uh, luckily, you know, do, working with the markers, you can get some watercolor technique with the markers. And that's what I'm doing here. Again, not coloring it in all the way, just little touches of color. Okay. Look at that for what I might have missed. Okay, I think I got it all. Now, the last part, this is the most important part, is you're going to take the Sahara sand and outline this. You need one really good Sahara sand. And you don't want really a straight line, you want to make this around the edges. Pull that around the edges. Let's make sure I can see it. You can see what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm actually moving this around so that I get in all the areas. So again, moving the paper around. This is what, from a distance or on a photograph, makes this pop. And I'm going to get into here where there's space inside the flowers and you can see the difference between the top and the bottom you know the um, the difference between the shaded and then the not shaded so I'm now going to do this other side again I'm going to outline this picking it up frequently working with the tip. I usually keep one Sahara sand just for me. I don't let you know people use it in my classes, that way I have a nice sharp one. Now the Sahara Sand is one of those colors, one of those very pale colors that you can actually go through again and get a couple of uh, darks inside the light and dark. So you can uh, layer the color, make it a little bit darker. Okay, let's pull this out. Now for the purposes of this card here, the um, reason I went with the crayons, or you could even do some of it with marker and some with crayon, is the crayon that we used here was soft suede, which would have been very dark and, and much more difficult to get that, uh, I guess, the effect of shadowing with the marker. You have a lot more give with the crayon, but you could have done the marker and then done crayon on the outside. Um, you can see I've touched this up very nicely with a little bit of glitter. I think actually I used the, the 
dazzling accents, it's just like a glitter glue, and our pearls. Added the pearls to that. So I hope that answers your question. Good luck with the coloring and uh, take care.